Ricardo Tormo in Valencia is the host for round two of the 2023 Finitwork FIM Junior GP World Championship. A circuit that has provided countless memories throughout the years and next to take to the circuit, it is the Moto2 European Championship. It's four kilometers in length, 14 turns, and the longest straight just shy of 900 meters, slipstreaming more than possible at this layout here in Cheste, just outside of the center of Valencia. Nine left-handers, five right-handers, limited overtaking opportunities, and that's just half of it. Moto2 action to come here from the Circuit Ricardo Toro in Valencia. Kiko Giles and Steve English taking you through the action today. We are going to reach the halfway point when this race's checkered flag is waved. Six on the billing. This is the third and it's the only Moto2 race. So we're going to check out what happened last time out at Estoril. This is it, Senna Aegis, the number 81. Well, he's the favorite coming into this year and he definitely lived up to expectation in the first race of the year. We had a red flag and a couple of crashes as well, but everybody at the end of the day was pretty all right. Big moment coming onto the straight further down the field. There's everybody jockeying for position in the opening race of the year. First blood went the way of Aegis. And then in race two, there was a bit more of the same. Plenty of action. It was an absolute riot through the field, as well as a couple of bits of fisticuffs and smashing up the doctor's branding on the outside of the track. But like I say, track temperature came up and we lost a lot of front runners from the main part of the race. No one could touch Senna Aegis though, and he heads to Valencia as the rider to beat in the standings. So, oh, here we are with blue sky and a little bit of cloud there, or <laughs> depending on how you see it, a little bit of blue sky, quite a lot of cloud. Uh, a few oranges, but we're not going to have time to tuck into them. Steve, we are here for Moto2, who's going to be flying high today as the uh, Third race of the season. The only one on the billing this weekend, Moto2. Terrible punnery there. I'm, I'm disappointed in you, Kiko. I, I'm glad you thought it was so good as terrible. Yeah, well, it is, it is a step up from the usual. But uh, in the <laughs> Moto2 you. class, it is actually a big step up compared to what we've had in the past in this class. If you think back over the last few years, we've been able to see a lot of riders really come through this class. The likes of Alonso, Aldeguer, Alex Greek. They've all been able to come through the European Championship and this has also then created a bit of a backlog. Now you've got riders actually looking to learn about a Moto2 bike in this class and try and prove themselves to get onto the world stage. That's where the likes of Antonelli or quite a few riders that have come from the Moto3 World Championship didn't get an opportunity in Moto2, Carlos Tate, for instance, and then they were able to make the steps into the European Championship and then hopefully into the World Championship. And that's what we've seen from Senna Aegis, obviously, in as a replacement rider in the past and pole sitter for today's Moto2 race. Today's been really good. In the morning we uh, did a, a good lap time when the conditions were optimal to make the good lap time and then in the afternoon we worked for the race and got an understanding with the, the tyre life for the race. And so I feel prepared thanks to my, my guys, thanks to everybody, thanks to the whole team for, for all their support and their work this weekend and I'm excited to see what I can give them back tomorrow. So that was Senna Aegis then uh, on pole position as well. He looks so, so good. The Australian rider up there, the number 81. And we were just saying then in that little VT that 
The bike looks good, Steve. It looks suited to him this year. He doesn't look like he's having to work as hard as he did last year. Yeah, I'm going to say probably the easiest prediction of the day here in Valencia. Senna's the clear favourite for this race. He won both races in the opening round of the year, a combined winning margin of 11 seconds. And obviously last year we saw that uh, Lucas Tulovic was very impressive in the Moto2 class, consistently up there in those leading positions. Senna starts the year as the favourite and he backed all of that up in the opening round of the year and he's doing the same here in Valencia as well. He's been very impressive. Took the pull by a few tenths of a second. Second place, Carlos Tatai, if you are joining us and a regular fan of Moto3, Moto2 and GP World Championship action, you'll know Carlos Tatai because he has been in Moto3 World Championships before. He qualified second on the grid at Estoril, second in the first race, retired from second in the second race. What can he do, Steve? Are you expecting him to challenge or not really with Aegis? It's about trying to just build as the season progresses. He's a rider that's had a Moto3 World Championship podium, so we know that Carlos has a lot of speed, and now he's adapting to the Moto2 machinery, and certainly that's uh, one of the big steps that riders do have to make, and he's done very well up to this point in his rookie season. Last time out in Estoril, he was very clearly the closest challenger to Senna all the way through the weekend. Harrison Voigt was on the podium last time out as well, but he couldn't do it from the front row. He had to do it from the third row. And I can tell you for the first time ever in the Moto2 European Championship history, two Australians on the front row. Can we have an Aussie one too? He's had a Rookies Cup podium in the past, Harrison, but he was always a little bit too big for a Moto3 bike. Never had a podium in the junior GP classes in uh, the Moto3 bikes, but uh, on a Moto2 bike, looks much more comfortable, looks much more suited to it. We've seen, as you say, Steve, we've seen some riders actually struggle to get on in the smaller classes. Um, and then make that step up, and it is a bit okay. Senna Aegis is one of them. He never really did anything in the junior GP class. Very familiar face and name here. Nicolo Antonelli, multiple Moto3 World Championship race winner. He's over with the Team MMR squad, learning his craft in Moto2 after a World Championship season last year, yielded no points. He's had a podium already. It's not looking too bad. Yeah, best finish last year in the World Championship of 16th, but he had a podium in Estoril Race 2, so he's just adapting to the European Championship, and it's a good chance for him to be able to learn on the fly. Four-time Moto3 race winner, so we know that he's a good, talented rider. Juan Rodriguez is fifth on the grid here. He's got plenty of success in the Spanish Championship, four podiums in the Spanish 600 class, and he had a relatively all right first round, never featured too much. It was consistent with two ninths, and he qualified in the top 10 on the grid as well. Center Aegis, though, your pole man, as we take a closer look at him, not long until this race gets underway, around seven minutes from now. We're going to check out Mattia Ratto next on the AGR team. Now, I spoke with his team, actually, this morning down in pit lane, Sam Wilford, Sam uh, from the fantastic area of Sidcup, where one yours truly is from, uh, so not um, partisan there at all. But uh, Wilford, of course, still getting back bike fit. He had that horrible accident at Estoril last year, but he is on the grid and he is making much more progress, but he's been outshone this weekend by Mattia Ratto, Steve, who we've always had a bit of a a liking to, he definitely rams it up the inside if the opportunity presents itself. Yeah, podium man last year in Estoril, and he's a rider that jumped onto a Moto2 bike very early. I think he was 15 whenever he started racing in this class, and uh, basically just skipped the Moto3 class. And he's a good, talented rider, but uh, it's all about trying to make the, the next step from being that regular top 10 guy to being a top five guy challenging for the podiums. Next up will be Xavi Cardaloos, the Andorran rider. We've seen plenty of him in recent years. Cardaloos, number 18, had a podium in the first round of the season. He was second. He was 13th in the first race, though, so not too consistent there. But Cardaloos, a stalwart of this class, four podiums last year. Uh, still chasing that first victory. He's been second no less than four times. Yeah, and uh, just turned 25 last week as well. So he's looking for that late birthday present, but he'd need a birthday present, you'd imagine, from the likes of San Aegis because Aegis has had that bit of pace on him all the way through the weekend. But you never know with Card Luce. He's always a contender for podiums, but just needs to make that little step. Unai Aradre is in eighth place on the grid, the middle of that third row from La Rioja in Spain. 
A uh, bit of a disappointing first round. You can see on the screens, 12th and a retiree. Uh, but that's not the full story. He's had World Super Sport points before as well. We know him from that paddock, Stephen. The Rad Race of Talent, no, no doubting that. A World Super Sport 300 race winner as well. Yeah, lots of podiums in the 300 class. A rider that everyone always thought might be able to make a bit of a step on the Super Sport bike. And it never quite worked out for him on that paddock but uh, he's got a chance here now in the moto 2 class in the european championship and he's doing a good job at this stage up there in the third row of the grid and it's just about adapting to these bikes very different to a super sport bike and then putting yourself in a position to be able to score well that was your top eight on the grid ninth place will be alex toledo the number 55 on the easy race team and that is jorge martin if i'm not mistaken steve uh, yeah, down in the, in the paddock. And we've seen plenty of Grand Prix riders in the paddock through the course of today as well. Lots of them coming back to the championships that they came through the ranks on. And uh, like I said, for quite a few riders in the Moto2 World Championship now, they came from this European Championship. So it isn't always just a case of going through the Moto3, the junior MotoGP ranks, and then into Moto3, Moto2, MotoGP classes. It can be a case of going straight from the European Moto2 Championship into the World Championship and giving yourself a chance to shine. And of course, Jorge Martin coming in off the back of a victory in the MotoGP Sprint at Le Mans. So that is what all of these guys are aspiring to, not just in this class, but of course in this paddock. This is Alex Toledo, who I was talking about in the number 55. What can he do on the easy race team machine? 10th place, completing the top 10. We are going to come to Sam Wilford in just a moment. Uh, hopefully. Well, we'll talk about Sam Wilford after this. This is your pole sitter, Senna Aegis. He's looking to make it three on the spin. This is the only chance the Motor 2 guys have at Valencia. Let's take a look at your grid then. As we say, Agius, Tatai and Voigt, two Australians on the front row for the first time ever in this championship. Antonelli, fourth, ahead of Rodriguez and Ratto, Cardalusa, Radre and Toledo completing the top nine. Completing the top ten, as we said just before, uh, Sam Wilford spoke to him this morning, still getting back bike fit. He is fit, there is no doubt about that in terms of his athleticism, but with that missing most of last year due to that awful accident at Estoril in race two of the year. Wilford just missing that bit of track time, which is irreplaceable, to be quite honest. Looking down the order, plenty of riders here, including uh, Alberto Sura. You'll know him, of course, from the Moto3 World Championship. Marco Tapia, uh, well, you'd expect him to be a bit higher up than that, but that, of course, he and Sura with penalties carrying over for qualifying. Yeah, and also Yari Ruiz as well on the number 72 machine. He sort of qualified on the second row with the grid, so he's going to make quick progress through the field. He's got a lot of pace, and uh, he's actually got a lot of experience as well in this class in the past. And uh, he's been a guy that's been able to have a lot of top five finishes. If he's able to do that today from the back of the grid, it's a good performance from the number 72 machine. Warm up lap underway then. This is your third race of the day. Kiko Giles here, Steve English alongside me. We'll be taking you through all the action here at Valencia. Uh, this is one of the most technical circuits on the calendar. We're going to be coming uh, to that in a moment. But warm up, Steve, what are these guys looking for? They have a brief warm up session this morning, but what is the warm up? It's just about getting everything up to temperature, making sure everything's feeling good out there. Yeah, get everything up to temperature, get yourself ready for the race, and then just make sure that you're able to make a good start. You can see one rider there ran off at uh, turn two. That's not where the long lap penalty loop is, but you will see riders having to respect the long lap penalty later in this race as well. We've already seen plenty of riders in the Moto3 and the ETC class have to take long lap penalties and certainly will be something we'll keep an eye on all the way through this race as well. As it is, though, Senna Aegis on the number 81 machine. He's your clear favourite. He's the rider that many feel will make the steps to the World Championship. We've seen him in action in the World Championship over the last few years as a replacement rider. Last year, especially in place of Sam Lowe's on quite a few occasions on the Mark VDS team. And one of the top teams in that paddock thinking that he was the ideal replacement rider does mean that you're going to get an opportunity on the world stage pretty soon. So Senna Aegis, he's the rider to watch in the class this season won the opening two races of the year he'll be out to make a three in a row track temperature coming up with just a little bit and these guys as well uh they'll be 
This is when they've had a lot of their, their sessions across this weekend, so they'll be familiar with this kind of track temperature already. Let's just check in with the championship standings. I just needs Antonelli already by more than a race wins worth. That's 26. Antonelli tied with Countryman Ratto on 24 points. Cardaloo's fourth. Uh, just a quick nod, Steve, to any predictions, any ones to watch from your side, anyone you've got an eye on? I'm excited to see what Yari Ruiz can do from seven, from the back of the grid on the number 72 machine. He's got good pace, he's got good experience in World Championship racing as well in the World Superbike paddock, so we'll see if he's able to make good progress on the 72. Certainly a rider that uh, I'd expect to see up inside the top 10 in the opening couple of laps, even though he's having to come through all the field. This is your pole sitter, Aegis, the number 81, rolling up then the Australian, looking to see if he can make it three on the spin for 2023. One thing is for sure, the 99 of Tatai will push him hard. We are coming under starter's orders, and when the lights go out, we are going racing. Valencia, Stowell on the... Oh, dear me. Carlos got, Tate. Tatai got away there very, very late. I said he was going to push... Aegis, uh, he's going to have to push very hard from behind now. Aegis takes the lead in towards turn one. It's an Aussie one, two. As through into second comes Voigt. And that is Mattia Ratto being forced right out. So Ratto down towards, that's fifth place for him now. Up into third, a fine start from the third row of the grid by Alex Toledo. But no one touching center Aegis and it is second place, Harrison Voigt, out front, 1-2 for Australia. Well, I said Yari Ruiz was worth keeping an eye on. He'd be into the top 10 in the opening couple of laps. He's already up into 11th spot. So the number 72 making quick progress, and uh, he needs to make sure he's able to latch on to the leading group as quickly as possible. The Moto2 field does stretch out a lot quicker than what we see in the other classes here in the, in the Junior GP paddock. This is where it's all about trying to make sure that you can get down to your pace straight away. That's where Senna Aegis is very good. They just leading the way then as they come through turn eight. So far, so good. Voigt chasing hard, and it is Juan Rodriguez who is into third place now ahead of Toledo, whilst Ratto is chasing hard. Roberto Garcia is up into sixth. Now, that is a surprise because he's come from quite a way down the order. Roberto Garcia really uh, a long way down. Don't forget, we have actually got long lap penalties for the riders in second and fourth. We should have touched on this on the before the race got underway, but uh, Harrison Voigt does have a long lap penalty for slow riding across all sectors, and the same for the 55 of Toledo, who is being pushed and shoved by Ratto at the last corner. Pushed out wide, Ratto's gonna be on the ideal line. Let's see who it's gonna be as they come down across the start and finish line. The front feet are cool enough at the front, but into the battle for fourth place, and it's Ratto who just about holds on ahead of Toledo. So Toledo, don't forget, has got that long lap penalty to serve already. No jump starts, we've just had that confirmed too. Yeah, everyone just trying to make sure that they're able to get themselves to the lead of their group so that they're in a position to be able to try and go with those front runners. You mentioned about the long lap penalties, the man in second, one of the riders taking that long lap penalty. So that's going to drop this man, Harrison Voigt, right down the order, you'd imagine. He'd have to take that in the opening few laps. So he'll try and delay that as much as possible, try and make sure he's able to open up as big of a gap as possible behind him, and then try and slot himself back into the top five spot. Yeah. It should take around two and a half seconds to complete this long lap penalty. We've seen front running riders across the other two races we've seen so far today have to serve them. Uh, but this the crucial one is this is at the start of the race, so you've got the full race to build back into. Yeah, we did see in the European Talent Cup race that the race winner had to take a long lap penalty at the start of the race. So it is possible to bounce back from that. And uh, Harrison Voigt immediately taking that now on the second lap. So he just wants to get it out of the way. Watch the slingshot down. There we go. He'll use that. Oh. Yeah, he's slotted. Has he got ahead of Tatai? He that has. is fantastic. So Tatai, slow start. They were second and third on the grid. And even with that long lap, Voigt has jumped the rider who we're expecting to come through into the podium positions. But that actually at the front has now released Center Ages. We're not expecting Juan Rodriguez to go with him. But stranger things have happened. Yeah, and I'm interested to see what happens with Voigt now as he tries to recover on that 29 machine to see if he can get some decent points out of this race. He's a rider that always looked like he had good speed in the Moto3 class. He was racing for the 658 team, but he never quite had the results to back it up. Now that he's on a, mo on a much bigger bike, it does suit a much bigger frame like a rider like Voigt. So he's now really able to show a little bit more of his potential. Yeah, Voigt fits a, a Moto2 bike a lot better than he did the Moto3 bike. You're quite right there. Steve, just seeing the fastest lap come in uh, last time around was by Senna Aegis. He was around 
two tenths quicker than the rider behind him, which is Juan Rodriguez on the 38 MMG Hinamoto machine. Third place, Matteo Ratto, three and a half to four tenths away from Rodriguez at the moment, but he's settled down, looking good in third. Yeah, Rodriguez there on the number 38 machine. He's got a very traditional style on the bike. He's not really moving off it as much as the other riders. You look at San Ages out in front, and there's big movements from him as his head's crane right over the inside of the corner, whereas the 38's a lot more upright. It's a much more classic old school style. Toledo taking his penalty as well. This is the uh, long lap area, so that's done as well. And Toledo slots down round about, yeah, Sam Wilford. And that's Nico, that can't be neat. Nico Antonelli, what has happened there? We completely missed that. Maybe he was taking avoided action of uh, the stalled rider on the grid that was uh, Carlos Tatai ahead of him. So Nico Antonelli, well, we thought he'd actually, oh dear, where is Harrison Voigt going there? But we thought Antonelli on the MMR machine this year would be a little bit of a star in the reckoning, but uh, it's not turned out that way. He's down in 13th, he's only just ahead of the of Marco Tapia who had to come through from the back of this grid. So uh, going one way Antonelli, but it's the wrong way, going the right way and upwards, fellow countryman Tapia. So let's keep an eye on that. Tatai making a move now on Harrison Voigt. This is an interesting battle because these are the two that after center ages, you've got to say, have got the pace behind him. Uh, it's going to be all about whether they can capitalize on that. They've got clear track ahead of him now, the 99 of Tatai in fifth, ahead of Harrison Voigt in sixth. Yeah, Carlos doing a good job as well to recover from this. This is his start where he just misses it entirely. And uh, for Carlos, he's able to at least recover pretty well from that. We'll see if there was an incident there as well for Antonelli. Just looks like he just got a little bit uh, bogged down by that as well. So for Antonelli on the 23, dropped all the way down behind Cardaluz right at the start. So he was down into about eighth position into turn one and then just trying to recover from that. This is the 13 of Ratto on Juan Rodriguez. This is for second place. Ratto looking like he really wants to come through and take it, I must say. So don't think it's going to be too long before Ratto finds his way through. Uh, 38 is Rodriguez, the 13 is Ratto. Aegis, I mean, he's got a 1.3 second lead, but it's not, he hasn't cleared off like we thought he would. He had good race pace in his race runs throughout Friday and Saturday, but I mean, he's got the gap, he's doing what he needs to do, but perhaps we expected him just to ease away. He's still got 15 laps to go, Mark. He's picked up a half a second on this lap already compared to the riders behind him. We'll see what it is to come across the line. They actually managed to recover a bit at the end of the lap. It was about four tenths of a second. So for Aegis, he's doing what he has to do. And uh, that's why for Ratto there on the number 13 machine, he had to come through because you can't afford to lose that ground in the early stages in the Moto2 class. You've got to make sure that you're running from the front foot. And as we see, Ratto coming through into second place. Let's see if uh, Rodriguez can respond here. Rodriguez looking good, I must say, in the top three. Roberto Garcia, mind you, up in fourth. That is a fantastic uh, ride from him so far. Let's check out where he started. He was way down the order, I must say. So we're going to check out on the grid. As Senna Aegis leads this race quite well. Garcia was down on row seven. That was incredible. Surely he wasn't that far. I know he wasn't. He was down on row four. He's still a long way down, down in 11th. So to be up in fourth place with Tatai and Voigt in fifth and sixth is quite remarkable. Uh, let's see if he can challenge for the podium. Garcia has had good runs out in this Moto2 field before, especially here in Valencia. Yeah, we've seen him have top five finishes in the class in the past. And fourth position is his best finish so far in his Moto2 European Championship career. He's up there in fourth right now. And he's got a little bit of a gap between himself and then Carlos Tate and uh, Harrison Voigt and Ruiz trying to recover back to him. And their pace in the last few laps has been pretty similar to one another. Yeah, but more or less, the only two the last time around. Let's check the times across the line this time. Just at the, the back of that group as well, the 67 of Alberto Sura. We saw him obviously in the Moto3 World Championship last year. He was right at the back of the field. He's the second fastest rider on the field the last couple of laps. Just uh, Senna Aegis faster than him, but he's been able to get himself up into the top 10 now as well. So number 67 on the speed up bike, making good progress. Yeah, the lap times at the front are very, very fast. 35, 8, 1, 7 for Aegis, 35, 8, 5, 2 for Ratto. So Ratto's got pace here. You feel that if he cleared a bit soon, he might have been able to go with. Uh, Rodriguez last time around 36.6, went to a 36.2 of Garcia, so Garcia four tenths quicker. That's your battle, fourth going up to third, but this is the battle on track. Tatai ahead of Yerai Ruiz, Steve, you said 
keep it on, Ruiz. He's, up to, he's doing you well here. Yeah, Ruiz is a good rider. He's got a lot of potential in the Moto2 class, and uh, he's doing a good job there with that Hector Fauvel squad. Ooh. That looks like, that's not the long lap penalty, that's no, a rider making that, a mistake. Is that Voigt? It might have been Harrison Voigt, it looked like it was a blue bike. So Voigt, and he's, yeah, Voigt's got missing from that group, so let's hope he's all right and he kept it upright, but Harrison Voigt, well, it was a promising qualifying, it has not come into fruition this time around, though Voigt has gone, definitely, he's not in that group, so Voigt has gone, this is the number 10 of Unai Radre, this is the teammate to Senna Aegis, and he is coming through the order pretty well here. He is up into ninth place. He's got Sura just ahead of him, the number 67. Yeah, Voigt lost seven seconds there with that run off, and it's dropped him all the way down the order, but uh, we'll see if he's able to have good pace to still score some points in this race, but it is going to be tough for the Aussie. Voigt is behind Mongiardo, Francesco Mongiardo on the team Chiatti Bosco Scuro, and that is fighting over 14th place. So Voigt, who was originally up in second, had to serve a long lap penalty, and he hasn't recovered from that, and I don't think he's going to now. He's a long way down, and there is a long way to go. It's still 12 laps to go. He'll be knocking on the door in the top 10 soon enough. Out front, Sano Aegis' lead, 1.9 over Mattia Ratto and Roberto Garcia now has got Juan Rodriguez as you can see on screen so Garcia coming through he's, yeah, we said earlier he's not at a podium well he's looking good for one at the moment Rodriguez he will be pushing on that is for certain the number 38 in fourth place Tatai pulling along Yerai Ruiz on the Hector Faubel machine fifth and sixth for those two those two have definitely got pace look at center ages out front sliding through the uh, flip-flop S is halfway around this lap. He's looking very comfortable out front, but we expected this as well. The little gap is up to 2.1. Yeah, just trying to keep it interesting for himself as much <laughs> as anything else you'd imagine. He's had the pace in hand over the field through the course of the season so far, and Senna just looks very comfortable out there. Anytime we've seen him trackside, he has looked like he's the man to beat. And even just when uh, I was walking down pit lane this morning and there was the, the meet and greet with the fans, he was just looking so relaxed. He knows what he has to do, and he's just making sure that he ticks, up, ticks all the boxes this season in the European Championship. He wants to have his opportunity in the world stage. He's going to get that opportunity as long as he keeps winning. And he's got good people around him as well. We saw down in his box earlier in the when we was having our walk down pit lane, uh, Steve Leon Camier, the team boss of Honda in the World Superbike side of things, uh, good advisor to to Senna and it's doing well so far. The gap stabilized at 2.1 last time around though. Two tenths quicker for Senna Aegis as he continues to pull out that gap. This is your battle for fifth and it's Ruiz now who has got ahead of Carlos Tatai. Oh dear me! <laughs> it's Aradre. That's Aradre, the number 10. Yeah, Aradre has gone down and that is a shame. Unai Aradre out of a top eight finish for certain there. So disaster for him. He is out of it at turn two, he's rejoined, but that is definitely any chance of good points gone for him. Yeah, it's a shame for Unai Radre. We've seen him in the World Championship in the Super Sport class and the 300 class, and doing a good job here, jumping up to a Moto2 bike after a good year in the Spanish Championship in the Super Sport class as well last year. It's just a case of trying to gain that experience, give yourself an opportunity to get the results. And unfortunately for Radre, you also have to learn some hard lessons, and uh, he's bit, he's hit the deck in this race, but he'll be back next time out. No doubt about Radre's potential, of course, a race winner, as we said before, in World Super sport 300 he's had good results in world super sports and he's trying his hand at moto 2 and looking not so bad so far even if he is down in a gravel across the line one more time then center Aegis leads this time by two and a half seconds 2.4 seconds he's come down to 10th in that final sector as it yo-yos around with Mattia Ratto in second third for Garcia fourth Rodriguez who is now coming under increasing pressure from the fifth place man which is Tatai. Tatai definitely closed in the number 99, who's got ahead of Ruiz once again, those two chopping and changing. Yeah, Tati's bringing this train with him as well. There were four riders all with decent pace, and it's Carl loose on the 18, and then Sura on the 67, the bright bike at the back of that group, and they're all faster than the riders in front of him. If you look at Sura, it was only the top two that were actually faster than last time around. That's why third position down to the 67 really is closing up that seven riders. Yeah, that everybody is coming into this in that battle for third, as we see Aegis and Ratto kind of clear off. Ratto is lapping a lot faster than everyone behind him. He's only 
two or three tenths a lap slower than ages. I say only because we wasn't expecting Ratto to be so competitive. We weren't ready, really, to see Ratto right up the sharp, um, sharp point of things, to be honest. Yeah, two top fives in the opening round of the year, and Estoril showed a rider that's made a step over the winter, but now it's about being that podium rider, that rider that can really challenge week in, week out, and uh, that's what uh, Mattia needs to do to make that step up. But uh, he's still very young, but he's got a lot of experience on these Moto2 bikes at this stage. So he's putting it to good use. 18 years old for Monza in Italy is Ratto. And he had two top five um, finishes at the start of this year at Estoril. A circuit he got his only podium at as well. So you don't really know the potential when it's you look at someone who goes well at one circuit and maybe can't trans transfer that over to the other. But he's looking good here in Valencia, not a circuit he's had the most amazing results at before. He's got OK, nothing super standout, but looking good in second. This is your race leader, fastest lap last time around 35.6. That's around the kind of pace he was on throughout yesterday in the second qualifying session. He was down to a 34.9 in the qualifying uh, one session. So Senna A just, just looking so at ease. You can see how his big frame is just so lended to a Moto2 machine. Yeah, it just looks comfortable out there on it. Looks like it's a bike that's made for him. And very similar to what we saw with Tulovic as well last year, a rider that when he was put into that position to beat the championship favorite, really stepped up and uh, was able to win races right from the outset and then just very consistent. And that's what Senna knows he has to do. If he wants to get a chance to be on a good bike and a good team in the Moto2 World Championship, he needs to make sure he's able to win week in, week out here in the European Championship. And then the opportunity will come up and it could well come up with this team as well. This is uh, going down towards turn one. Steve, how important is uh, getting it all anchored up here? It's a key corner. Yeah, you can see here for Senna, just leading this race. It's just about hitting your markers, click back the gears, and then drive through the corner. If you're chasing down a rider, that's a key overtaking spot because you can dive down the inside. But especially on the Moto 2 bike, you need to be very deliberate with your moves on a Moto 2 bike. And that's where around a track like this, it tends to be a couple of key overtaking opportunities. But turn one where we see Mattia Ratto, Ratto now coming through in the 13 machine. That is one of the key overtaking spots. Ratto looking good in second. Garcia trying to chase him down. Was a tenth of a second quicker last time around. So Garcia's not completely done yet with third place. Uh, fourth is Carlos Tatai at the moment, who's still ahead of Juan Rodriguez. Rodriguez dropping back now into the clutches of Yeray Ruiz. And then it's Xavi Cardaluz and Alberto Sura behind them. So. Let's check out and see what we can do uh, with this battle for fourth and whether or not actually Carlos Satai can bridge the gap up to Garcia in third. Carlos can bridge the gap. Now he's got that clear track in front of him. Let's see if he's able to close up on a podium spot. The gap right now, 1.2 seconds with seven and a half laps to go. Very much can be closed down. He was able to make the move into turn one last time around and uh, he just needs to keep doing that. It's just a little bit wide down there at turn eight. Now they're coming through turn nine and 10, the fast change of direction left to right. And then turn 11, where the long lap penalty is. Leave the door open here and someone's coming through on you, but not this time, they're all spaced out enough. The gap as we are coming down now, Rodrigo, uh, sorry, Garcia back to Tatai. is about one and a half seconds. We'll check out what it is at the end of this lap. Uh, sorry, it's about 0.9 of a second. We'll check out what it is at the end of this lap. They're coming through the final corner now. Tatai uh, gonna come to the line. Here we go, Rodriguez. Chasing Tatai, Tatai chasing Garcia across the line, it's still 0.9. So we're talking hundreds of a second that time around as Ruiz goes in ahead of Rodriguez for fifth. Yeah, and uh, Ruiz knows that he has to hit the front of that group because Carlos Tatai is pulling away. Last time around, Tatai was a quarter of a second faster than Garcia, so he is closing in and uh, he's going to bring the likes of Yari Ruiz with him, you'd imagine. But it is about trying to make sure you're able to make clean progress through the field, not cost yourself when you're overtaking, because it's so difficult to make up big chunks of lap time around here. Even Senna Aegis out in front now, three and a half seconds clear of the field. He's only pulling out two tenths of a second on the lap on everyone else. So even though he's got a, what looks like a big lead, it's actually quite hard earned here in Valencia. We talk, uh, We spoke about just then Juan Rodriguez. He was up in third in the initial stage of this race. Why is he dropping back, Steve? A little bit of tyre life coming into it. Not quite used to the bike yet. What, what would be a reason for why he's dropping further down? Well, it's just about trying to have your experience in it. He's only done 
12 races in the Moto2 class in the past. And uh, this is also where he's made a big step forward, where he's actually in that lead group. If you think back to the start of this season so far, he had top 10 finishes in Estoril, but they were the first top 10 finishes of his Moto2 career, and they were both for ninth position. It's a very different scrap when you're trying to hold on to podiums or top fives. So he's doing a good job in this race all the same to make that step on the number 38 machine. Well, we've seen before, actually, Rodriguez has been in the stock class predominantly, and the stock class now is separate. He wanted to stay in the Moto2 European Championship, so he's got to learn new machinery along with that. So uh, doing a solid job. We're not being too hard on him, but it would be nice to see him a little bit further up, back in that battle for third. We said if... Satai will close down uh, Garcia, he's halved that gap, it's now half a second, here they are on screen, the 31 of Garcia looking for a first podium, Carlos Tatai looking to spoil his party. Yeah, and uh, Tatai just so much faster at this stage, and uh, probably even for Carlos, he's thinking, do I have a chance of being able to catch Rato for second as well? The gap between him and second spot is two seconds with five and a half laps to go, he can still catch him as well, so for the number 99 machine, Carlos Tatai, a rider that we've seen in Moto3 World Championships in the past. This is key for him to show just how good he can be on a Moto2 bike as well, as he has to make pretty quick progress through the field here with five and a half laps to go. Yeah, Tatai, he's a bit wide there though. He's always wide at turn eight. I don't know if that's just his line, but it, it doesn't look like it's the quickest way around. He's quite considerably offline. Yaro Weath has dropped uh, Cardaloos now. Rodriguez is back to seventh by Cardaloos. Um, I don't know whether Ruiz has really got the pace to to latch on to the two ahead of him. Definitely not Tatai, otherwise he would have gone with him. But maybe if Tatai can ruffle Garcia, that will be when Ruiz takes that opportunity. One person who isn't being ruffled, though, is this man out front, Senna Aegis, class of his own, and as it stands now, will be 31 points clear as the championship standings graphic says, and a perfect three from three. Yeah, and uh, certainly for... Senna, this is exactly what he has to do. I think for Yari Ruiz up there in fifth position, he's got the same pace as the likes of Rato there on the 13 and Garcia on the 31. He just can't do anything with it. And uh, now it's a case of trying to just dig in for the last five laps, see if you're able to pick off another rider in front of you. Carlos Tatai, he's going to come through in Garcia on this lap and needs to come through very quickly for it as well. Last time around, Carlos was down in the 35s, so he was still two tenths of a second faster than the riders in front of him. So he's edging himself up towards uh, Rato there in second spot, but there's a lot of work still to be done. There's the, the phrase of, uh, it's one thing to catch a rider, it's another thing to pass. I don't think Tatai's going to have too much drama doing that. Um, but, of course, it's a factor. He's still got to clear Garcia. He's still got to make a clean move. If he doesn't make a clean move, then perhaps Garcia's coming back under him. All these little factors coming in with four and a half laps to go, make or break uh, Tatai's charge to second as well. Yeah, and uh, that's where Carlos needs to make his progress. He's pulled back another two tenths of a second already on this lap. Sector one, he's very strong, but he keeps getting bottled up a little bit in the middle of the lap. So he probably needs to think about either the last corner or get a good drive out of the last corner and set the move up into turn one. Four laps to go when you come across the line this time around means that he's still got 1.8 seconds to make up on second. It might be just taking him a bit too long to get through here in the 31 and get onto the podium to then give himself a chance of a second spot. He might run out of laps. Tatai there as well. He was looking like he had a good pace coming through that long, uh, that long left-hander turn 13, but very good riding really from Garcia. It was just a little bit towards the inside, which blocked off any opportunity Tatai had into the last corner. And then we go another lap. And you know, Garcia's riding very, very well. He's looking for that first podium, you know, and he's putting his bike in all the right places. It's not about always being the fastest, it's about being the smartest. Yeah, and you can see for Carlos there, he's a little bit ragged now as well. Look at it, the movement on the bike as well. So he needs to just make sure he's able to keep that nice and calm, and then it'll set up the moves. He needs to force a mistake here. He's not going to be able to catch second, so it is just about getting onto the podium. Oh, pass coming up here, and that was Garcia who left the door wide open. Through comes Tatai. Will Garcia respond? We've seen Tatai go wide at turn eight before. Does he go wide again? We'll see, he's very late on the brakes there. This time, anchors it all up, and you've got to think that perhaps that might be that in terms of that third place battle. Now, three and a half laps to go, and 1.8 seconds to get up to, oh, Harrison Point's disastrous race here. He had to serve the long lap, then he went wide at turn eight, now he's gone down. 
Harrison Voigt, it promised so much and it has given so little. The good thing is he's up and OK, he's just going to be angry with himself. Yeah, he will be angry with himself. And uh, Alberto Sur has lost a lot of ground in the last couple of laps as well. So I wonder if he had another issue as well. But uh, out in front, it's four and a half seconds now for Senna Aegis as he comes across the line. Three to go. And it does look like uh, for Carlos Tatai, he's going to be under attack in the run down in towards turn one from Garcia. Garcia, not quite close enough now. So for Tatai, this is where you need to just get your head down, see if you're able to open up a gap. But this is the only battle really left out there, unless you're looking just behind them as well at Yari Reese. But this is for the podium. This is the one that matters. Yeah, and it, I tell you what, <laughs> Tatai was so late on the brakes then down in towards turn one. He was so much late on the brakes then. Garcia, so that must be where he's making up a load of his time. He's pulled out a good three tenths on him in that first few corners alone. So uh, very good stuff from Tatai. He's 1.7 behind uh, Ratto. I just don't see how that's going to change. That looks like your podium could be settled without any late dramas. That's your battle there. The fluorescent yellow of the fifth place rider, Yero Ruiz. Fantastic ride from Ruiz all the way up through the order, Ruiz who was starting down in 22nd place on row eight due to a penalty. He's come through fine top five as in comes Sura. Now, we said that, uh, sorry, I'm not going to take credit for that. Steve said that Sura was dropping down at the same time as Voigt. I wonder if them two things are related. That looked a bit more technical. That looked like a technical issue there for Sura, unfortunately, and that would explain why he, he lost a lot of time in the last couple of laps. So unfortunate for him but uh, at least he'll be able to, to race next time out in the Hareth in a few weeks' time. Yeah, not long to go until they're back out on track. This is what happened with Voigt. There we go, sliding out. Just Great losing spot. it on his own. It's a typical crash you get through that corner where you just wash out the front. You're trying to push it a little bit too hard, and unfortunately for Harrison, that's been the story of his days. Just trying to maybe just ask a little bit too much of it, but uh, still, for a rider jumping onto that bike after being on a Moto3 bike, he's been able to do a decent job this weekend and at the opening round of the year in Estoril. He's going to have some good results this season. Is that still, because it's only his third race in the class, a little bit of inexperience coming in as well, not knowing the limit yet on this bike? It'll be a factor, but you also have it where there's just the frustration of knowing that you've had a front row start and you haven't been able to convert it and all those things just take time to be able to get used to as well. He wants to prove what he can do in the Moto2 bike. We are on the penultimate lap. Senna Aegis just, just in cruise control mode. He's coming up on a bit of traffic. That looks like it will be uh, Shannon, Inter and Charles Aubrey. They are the 98 and number 9. Uh, just ahead of Senna, he will not... Uh, he's come through nice <laughs> and easily. They've gotten out of the way. They've away. seen the blue flags and uh, Senna's able to make pretty swift progress through there. Just over a lap to go between Senna Aegis and another race victory. I was just about to say uh, he will not wrestle his way through. He'll take his time. They got out of the way anyway for him, so that's all good. Tatai, well, I'll tell you what, he ain't... It's not for the lack of trying for this second place. The gap is down to 0.9. There's Ratto. Ratto, if he runs out wide or if he has a moment or anything like that, Tatai is creeping in here. This is going to be close. I think he's going to run out of laps. The gap across the line was eight tenths. It's a massive job on for Tatai, but don't bet against him. He's pushed hard to get that far. So Tatai, this isn't done. It looked like it was. Unless he pulls out the lap of his life, it should still be OK for Ratto. Yeah, it took him so long to come through on Garcia that unless Ratto's got an issue, it's going to be very difficult for him. But Ratto's pace last time around in the mid-36s, so uh, it wasn't particularly slow, only a few tenths of a second slower than what he's been doing up to this point. But for Carlos Tatai, all the way through this race, when he's in clear track, he's been in the 35s, which is the same pace as San Aegis. So he's had the speed, he's just made a few mistakes. Ratto, uh, sorry, Tatai was actually six tenths faster than your race leader Aegis on that last lap around obviously Aegis is starting to roll it out a little bit the gap's down 4.9 the gap between Ratto and Tatai is still three quarters of a second I just don't think it's going to change in fact in sector two he dropped a little bit of time so unless a mistake comes in from Ratto it looks 
all good. But what about this man, Steve? This has been a class act. Super stuff from Senna once again. And uh, he's been able to show just how good he is on a Moto2 bike all the way through the winter and into the, the start of the season in the first three rounds. He's the guy that everyone knew was the rider to beat. And that puts a lot of pressure on you. It doesn't look like the pressure's phasing them. He's soaking up that pressure. So a double at Estoril, and it's the 100% record continuing. Senna Aegis on one wheel dominates Moto2 in Valencia. Across, oh, dearie me, surely not. No, Ratto did take second. We came to it a bit late. I thought Ratto had bottled it all there. He didn't. Tatai takes third. So a career best second for Matteo Ratto. Fine stuff from the 13. He is elated, but making it three from three, he won't be as elated as this rider. Senna Aegis has made it look easy. Fine stuff from Aegis. Ratto in second, Tatai third. Ahead of Garcia, who equals his career best finish in fourth. Yerai Ruiz up from 22nd on the grid to fifth. Cardaluz sixth, Juan Rodriguez, a fine effort in seventh. He's still getting used to Moto2 machinery, but Rodriguez for sure is going to make that uh, come good as the year rumbles on. I think that will be his best result in this class. It is by two places. His previous best was ninth, achieved twice, both last time out, at Estoril. Uh, behind them, Nico Antonelli took eighth place, ahead of Marco Tapia and Alex Toledo. But Sam Wilford just missing out on that top 10, the British rider in 11th place on the ADR team, Calix. 12th place for Francesco Mongiardo, Jared Rue, Kyle Paz, the Filipino rider, and Unai Aradre back up and in 15th place. So he recovered to take a point. It makes it at least worth it. He just got ahead of Philip Raychek on the Cardoso Fantic Racing Calex in 16th. But no doubting the winner, no doubt in second. And after that scary launch when he looked like he stalled it, Carlos Tatai third. Not so bad after all, but number 81, Senna Aegis in a class of his own. We hear him from him very soon when he gets down to Mark Ferme. And like uh, like Max Martin, uh, like Max Quiles, I apologise again, Max Quiles in the European Talent Cup. I think he did that whole cool down up on one wheel. Are we going to get a top rack style stoppy? We know Senna likes to do a stoppy as well in Park Ferme. No, not this time. He rolls in nice and calm. Good job. Pat on the helmet, pat on the back by the team. Senna Aegis is looking good for this title this year. I know there's only three races done, but he's been more or less untouchable in all of them. Leon Camille down there in the, uh, I think it's a grey uh, T-shirt. There he is with the sunglasses on and the, the grey hair. Leon obviously advising to Senna this year and last year uh, about, the, uh, about his career and about all things racing related. Camia, the team boss of Team HRC over in World SBK, who run Ica Laquona and Xavi Vierge. Both of those riders coming from this paddock. That's the official fan club of Carlos Tatai. They were treated to uh, a mighty fine performance. And this man, Mattia Ratto, when he finally gets to Park Ferme, he celebrated his third place in a crazy style last year at Estoril. I was down there for that moment. And this is his second career podium. His first podium since then. Massive stoppy on the way in. Let's see this. Ratto will be absolutely delighted. He's happy with that. And the AGR team will be happy as well. It's been a, a bit of a long wait. <laughs> Great stuff from Ratto. It's been a long wait for, for, Mattia, uh, for AGR team and for Matteo Ratto, I should say, as well. They, you know, AGR team, you had a feeling that Sam Wilford, before his injuries last year at Estoril, was going to take that team up to the podium. It wasn't to be in the end. Still a solid ride for, for Sam Wilford down in 11th place, but uh, lacking that bike fitness, as he was saying earlier on. Tatai in third, he won't be able to grovel at that. It was a fine performance. And he definitely gave it everything in the last couple of laps. Try and deny Mattia Ratto his personal best finish in the class. Everyone just tucking into a little bit of lunch then in the in the stands. As everyone celebrates that. That's the only Moto2 race of the day I should talk about, uh, by the way, because they're back in action next time out uh, at Hreth. 
but look at the style of Senna Aegis. Senna Aegis looking so, so good on one wheel across the line. Remember Troy Corsa doing a massive wheelie on an Aprilia back in World Superbike in 2001 at this very track. It was mighty fine. He even has time to, to stand up on the way into pit lane. Fantastic from Senna. I bet it didn't take him ages to learn how to do that. Apologies. <laughs> Steve's down there, as you can see, ready and waiting to chat with your race winner. It's going to be very, very hard to tame Senna Aegis now. You get the feeling that he's looking a bit strong and a bit good for, uh, for this title. And here we go. He's just getting into position now. Senna Aegis is ready and waiting with Steve. Steve won't have to do a native uh, language this time because he's Australian. So it'll just be the one interview in English coming up. Let's cross down to them Steves with Senna, three from three. Senna just three in a row, and uh, you've got a few weeks off until a wrath, but can you keep the run going? Yeah, amazing race today, um, amazing pace. I was just stable the whole race, and I was like, just challenge myself out there with the lap times and managing the gap on the pit board. But a big thank you to the Husqvarna Luca Moly um, Intact GP team today. Uh, they did a fantastic job for me all weekend, and I'm glad to deliver this for them on Sunday. So hopefully to take this form for our first two races to Jerez in a couple of weeks. Super stuff, mate. Well done. Thank you. Leave the interview, looks like that's the only time he didn't know where to go. Highlights from race action in Moto2, and it was a lively start. Tatai making a mess of it from the front row, it's second place on the grid. Uh, Senna Aegis hit the front, and basically that was that. No one really saw which way he went. In the early laps, Harrison Voigt tried to go with him, and Voigt unfortunately had to serve a long lap anyway from a qualifying misdemeanor, so that took him out of contention. Whilst Mattia Ratto was absolutely on a mission coming through on Juan Rodriguez. Roberto Garcia was soon up inside the top three too, as he was staring down the barrel of a first podium in the class, the previous best of just fourth, but Tatai was also making moves further back. He was not done just yet. With five to go, it was Tatai who slithered through at turn six, while slithering out was Harrison Voigt, who went on at turn eight anyway. It was a disastrous day from a qualifying that uh, the potential was quite high. Talking of uh, potential that was quite high, Senna Aegis was in cruise control, and despite a last charge up to second place, Tatai just wasn't able to make amends on Ratto. Ratto on the ADR team bike, looking good in second. Looking better than all of them. A double at Estoril. It was another win for Senna Aegis. Across the line on one wheel and stood up. He knows how to show both Senna Aegis in mighty, mighty form. Second went to Mattia Ratto, who took a career best second. Third for Carlos Tatai. What could have been if Tatai had got away well? Could he have challenged Senna Aegis for the win? Unlikely, but it's something we'll just have to wait and see for next time at Jerez. I'm back now live with the podium. We've got a Australian, an Italian, and a Spaniard on the rostrum here in Valencia. The third place trophy will go to Carlos Tatai. Great ride from him. Fantastic recovery. Matteo Ratto will be celebrating this all evening, I'm sure. But Senna Aegis is on top again. It's kind of part of the furniture in that podium when he's uh, just there all the time in the middle in number one. We'll get the, the trophies very, very soon. I can tell you that the third place by Tatai, that will be his second podium in the class after race one last time out at Estoril. It's a second podium after last year at Estoril for Matteo Ratto. And as you can see, it is Alex Escrig who's on trophy handing out duty today. 
He gives it to Matteo Ratto, the Moto2 World Championship rider there in attendance here at Valencia, along with many stars. Whilst Joel Kelso, the Moto3 World Championship rider for CF Moto, hands out the winner's trophy to Senna Aegis. One Australian to another. Fantastic to see Joel back in the paddock. This is the Australian National Anthem for your winner, Senna Aegis. Advancing in the championship standings, it has been a magical performance so far this season for Senna Aegis. A fifth win now, that moves him level with Carmelo Morales and Ricard Cardus in the overall standing. Steve's back with me from the interview down there. Another day at the office for Senna, looking cool. Yeah, very solid start to the season for Senna. And just down in Park Ferme, just having a quick chat to Leon Camier, his advisor. Camier said, now you take it easy whenever you're asking him questions down in Park Ferme. And all I could think was, he's winning races comfortably. It's, a, it's definitely not going to be a case of asking any hard questions at this stage. It's just about maintaining that momentum going forward. And the goal for Senna is very much to be in the World Championship next year. And he's doing everything he can to make sure that he's got a good spot on the grid next season in the World Championship. Yeah, he's looking so good, Senna Aegis. Uh, he was now uh, moving up in the win rankings as well. He's looking very, very solid. And he's still only 17. He's got such a future ahead of him. Um, and that's the, the interesting thing. He's one of the youngest riders coming through this paddock. So many before him have done the same. Fermin Aldeguer is one of them. Alonso Lopez another, even though Alonso Lopez stepped back. But this championship... Uh, giving talent up to the main world championship, which is the important thing. These are your final results from the only Moto2 European Championship race here in Valencia. Three out of 11 done. Senna Aegis, Matirato, Tatai, Garcia, Yerai Ruiz, the top five, Cardaluz, Rodriguez, Antonelli, Marco Tapia in ninth. And soon when we flick over the page, it'll be Alex Toledo at the top. He was 10th. Sam Wilford for Britain in 11th, Francesco Mongiardo, Gerard Ryu, Kyle Path for the Philippines, and Unai Radre after his crash finishing 57 seconds adrift, but that is more of a story of what could have been. Philip Raychek in 16th had a Mark Garcia, Shannon Inter and Charles Aubrey uh, finishing out your order, Alberto Sura, Harrison Voigt, Mattia Volpi and Maxwell Tott uh, not finishing the race. Championship standings should be next, and it's 75 points uh, up for grabs after three races. It's 75 points matched by Senna Aegis in a league of his own. 31 clear of Mattia Ratto, who moves up to second. Carlos Tatai third. Cardaluz and Antonelli fourth and fifth, but just a point separates them. Yero Ruiz equal with Antonelli in sixth place. Toledo Rodriguez behind them. Sam Wilford rounding out the top 10. Harrison Voigt, 11th, but that picture does not tell the full story. Roberto Garcia's fourth place here today. His only points so far of the season, so he's off and running, and he's got them on the scoreboard. Further down, going right the way through the order. Mongiardo, Vukrinek, and Inter. The final point score is on the board so far. A stand-up wheelie in style for Senna Aegis. He is looking in a class of his own. Can anyone stop him next time out to Jerez? We'll find out. Don't go anywhere. Three more races still to come. We're back with Junior GP action very, very soon. <laughs> 